ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर चेव नरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्राएशु अभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ट की कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोपाकुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नम हरे कृष्णा डियर डिबोटीज वेलकम फॉर दिस सेशन ऑफ दी भागवतम जस्ट गिव मी वन सेकेंड ओके आई जस्ट क्लोज माय पेरेंट्स बेडरूम डोर एंड कम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा सॉरी दे आर आल्सो लिसनिंग सम लेक्चर सो आई थॉट आई शुड जस्ट क्लोज द डोर आई जस्ट शेयर द स्क्रीन विद यू ऑल गिव मी वन मिनट सो वी आर ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर लास्ट श्लोका ऑफ दिस Who is this using the white board? Which participant is scribbling on my screen? So please do not scribble on my screen over here. Whoever was it? Okay. Give me just one minute, okay? I'll just. Uh... with the control on the white board या स सर्वधिवृत्ति अनुभूता सर्व आत्मा यथा स्वपन्न जा जने चितेक्तैग तम सत्यम आनंद निधिम भजेत नान्यत्र सज्जित यत आत्मपातः uh anuprabhu please read the translation uh hari krishna who is writing on this board what are, on the screen who is that who is writing on the screen who is neha neha pate chandani hari krishna ma'am so who is writing on this screen of puja chukka Pujit Chukka, who is he? No, ma'am, I am not writing. Okay, sorry, maybe you are not making. But who is this Pujit Chukka? Ni? So it is a because I have put controls. I don't know why. Okay, it's checked out. Okay. Uh. Yeah, Vrinda, please read the translation and purport both. 
Translation One should concentrate his mind upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who alone distributes himself in so many manifestations, just as ordinary persons create thousands of manifestations and dreams. One must concentrate the mind on him, the only all blissful absolute. Yeah, this truth. Otherwise, one will be misled and will cause his own degradation. Purport. In this verse, the process of devotional service is indicated by the great Goswami Srila Shukadeva. He tries to impress upon he tries to impress upon us that instead of diverting our attention to several branches of self-realization, we should concentrate upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the supreme object of realization, worship, and devotion. Self-realization is as it is where offering a fight for eternal life against the material struggle for existence and therefore by the illusory grace of the external energy, the yogi or the devotee is faced with many allurements which can entangle a great fighter again in the bondage of material existence. A yogi can attain miraculous success in material achievements such as anima and laghima by which one can become more minute than the minutest or lighter than the lightest or in the ordinary sense one can achieve many benedictions in the shape of wealth and women but one is warned against such allurements because entanglement again is again in such illusory pleasure means degradation of the self and further imprisonment in the material world by this warning one should follow one's vigilant intelligence only the supreme lord is one and his expansions are various he is therefore the super soul of everything when a man sees anything he must know that his seeing is secondary and the lord's seeing is primary one cannot see anything without the lord's having first seen it that is the instruction of the Vedas and the Upanishads. So whatever we see or do, the super soul of all acts of seeing or doing is the Lord. This theory of simultaneous oneness and difference between the individual soul and the super soul is propounded by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the philosophy of Achintaya Bheda. Bheda, Bheda Tattva, the Virat Rupa or the gigantic feature of the Supreme Lord includes everything materially manifested. And therefore, the Virat Rupa or the gigantic feature of the Lord is the super soul of all living beings, of all living and non-living entities. But the Virat Rupa is also the manifestation of Narayana or Vishnu. And going further on and on, one will eventually see that Lord Krishna is the ultimate super soul of everything that be. The conclusion is that one should unhesitantly become a worshipper of Lord Krishna or for that matter, his plenary expansion, Narayana, and none else. In the Vedic hymns, it is clearly said that first of all, Narayana cast a glance over matter and thus there was a creation. Before creation, there was neither Brahm, Brahma nor Shiva. And what to speak of others? Sri Pada Sankaracharya has definitely accepted this, that Narayana is beyond the material creation and that all others are within the material creation. The whole material creation, therefore, is one with and different from Narayana. Simultaneously, and this supports the Achintaya Bheda, Bheda Tattva philosophy of Lord Sri Krishna, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Being an emanation from the glancing potency of Narayana, the whole material creation is non different from him. But because it is the effect of his external energy, Bhahiranga Maya, and is aloof from the internal potency, Atma Maya, the whole material creation is different from him at the same time the example given in the in this verse very nicely is that one of the dreaming man 
the dreaming man creates many things in his dream and thus he himself becomes the entangled seer of the dream and is also affected by the consequences this material creation is also exactly like a dream like creation of the lord but he being the transcendental super soul is neither entangled nor affected by the reactions of such a dream like creation he is always in his transcendental position but essentially he is everything and nothing is apart from him as a part of him one should therefore concentrate on him only without deviation otherwise one is sure to be overcome by the potencies of the material creation one after another it is confirmed in the bhagavad gita as follows sarvabhutani konte ya prakritim yanti mamikam O son of Kunti, at the end of the millennium, every material manifestation enters into my nature. And at the beginning of another millennium, by my potency, I again create. The human life, however, is an opportunity to get out of this repetition of creation and annihilation. It is a means whereby one may escape the Lord's external potency and enter into his internal potency. Thus end the Bhakti Vedanta purports of the second canto, first chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The First Step in God Realization. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. So, Srila uh, uh, Vishwana Chakrati Thakur, he says that this yogi that is there, okay, uh, uh, when he's furnished with impressions of his senses in his mind from many, many births uh, in the past. So, and these impressions, you know, which are like very temporary, like if you see in a dream, uh, you, we can experience all sorts of, uh, you know, uh, men and enjoyment and will worship the Lord also. Uh, an ocean of bliss, eternal which is a time, space, and and those things will, you know, eventually cause degradation. So, Srila Vishwana Chakrati Thakur, he says in his commentary that, uh, according to this meditation on the Lord, there will appear uh, certain results, such as enjoyment also, power also. So then, the question may arise that, uh, should this yogi enjoy these or not? If he enjoys, then it is indicating that uh, he is a lax yogi. So then, uh, Shri Vishwana Chakri Thakur says that when the this yogi's heart is no longer attracted uh, to this enjoyment available only through yoga, he can find liberation uh, where uh, death can uh, show no pride to him. And then if he does not enjoy those things, it is still difficult to reject those enjoyments which will arrive eventually. So, Shri Vishwana Jagru Thakur says that whether he enjoys, whether he does not enjoy, then if he learns to discriminate, only by discrimination uh, alone, uh, it will become easy for him. So, uh, this method of discrimination is shown. So this yogi, he is filled with all these old impressions from his senses in his mind, you know, lasting from so many births uh, in the past and uh, uh, he has enjoyed and uh, he has all these powers, maybe, you know, as a lord of devatas or the humans. So uh, then Srila Vishwana Thakur is saying that what is the use of experiencing those things again? So because uh, these all experiences are uh, temporary, they are not permanent. So then uh, Srila Vishwana Thakur, he gives an example. He says that uh, just like, you know, creations of various uh, people, friends, soldiers and ministers with all uh, sorts of enjoyments uh, are experienced by a particular living entity in his dream. So, uh, he should worship the Lord 
who is an ocean of bliss and uh, he is existing in all time and at all places that's why the uh, uh, he uses uh, this word called satyam over here so he does not become at attached to other things uh, or to the happiness of this material world because he knows that uh, it is limited in time and space and uh, this happiness in this material world is just without an ocean of bliss so this yogi he has to meditate only on on this particular form uh, on the virat form then meditation on any other form will lead to degradation and secondly is that understanding is that that if while meditating on this form if he gets attracted to you know different siddhis which are the uh, intermediate results of the practice of yoga it will again cause him a degradation so uh, two meanings uh, giving up this form and meditating on this form will cause him degradation so a uh, meditation on this form gets him attached to anything other than liberation which is the ultimate goal of his meditation and then also he will get degraded so either this or either that he will be you know degraded so with this we'll move with the uh, second chapter the second chapter is a really wonderful chapter the lord in the heart the chapter name is only such a wonderful chapter that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, how the lord because uh, in the first uh, you know in the first chapter uh, we have covered actually there are four topics so uh, we have four topics to be covered uh, one topic is that the description of the dharna ashray of the virat roop meditator dharna ashray means uh, the object of meditation uh, then uh, the second is the description of the dharna ashray of the parmatma meditator the third is how the parmatma meditator achieves liberation and the fourth is how a rubarat roop meditator achieves liberation so out of all those four topics uh, we have discussed one topic in this first chapter which is the description of the virat roop uh, description of the uh, object of meditation for the virat roop medit meditator so now uh, this chapter we will see the other three topics uh, which is starting with the description of the form of the uh parmatma that the parmatma meditator can meditate on this particular form so uh, this first chapter is ending or ended with the description of the virat roop form of the lord now this virat roop form uh, is an imaginary form one might have this doubt that uh, does such meditation really bear fruit so Uh, is it really going to give me some liberation? So, in order to dispel such doubts, uh, Shukdev Goswami gives one very, very famous or popular example in order to prove that indeed uh, such a meditation does bear fruit. And now, in the very first uh, shloka, if you see, he is going to give example of Lord Brahma. uh himself and uh, he is going to tell us that lord brahma who is the uh, uh who is the creator and uh, uh, uh who 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 has created this creation he is one of the examples so let me just share you with you the screen I'm sorry, I just went to a wrong canto. I'm just wondering how come the second chapter name is. Hmm. 
So now Shukshila Shukdev Goswami says that Evam Pura Dharana Yatme Yoni Nashtam Smritim Pratyavarudhya Tushtatat Tatha Sasar Jedam Amogadrishti Yatha Payad Praga Vivasaya Buddhihi so he is saying that evam pura. So uh, like you can say that once upon a time, like you know, so that way. Let's see the translation and purpose both. Anuprabhu, please read the translation and purpose both. Translation. Sri Shukadev Goswami said, Formerly, prior to the manifestation of the cosmos, Lord Brahma, by meditating on the Viratrupa, regained his lost consciousness by appeasing the Lord. Thus, he was able to rebuild the creation as it was before. Purport. The example cited herein of Sri Brahmaji is one of forgetfulness. Brahmaji is the incarnation of one of the mundane attributes of the Lord. Being the incarnation of the passion mode of material nature, he is empowered by the Lord to generate the beautiful material manifestation. Yet due to his being one of the numerous living entities, he is apt to forget the art of his creative energy. This forgetfulness of the living being, beginning from Brahma down to the lowest insignificant ant, is a tendency which can be counteracted by meditation on the Virat Rupa of the Lord. This chance is available in the human form of life. And if a human being follows the instruction of Srimad Bhagavatam and begins to meditate on the Viratrupa, then revival of his pure consciousness and counteraction of the tendency to forget his eternal relationship with the Lord can follow simultaneously. And as soon as this forgetfulness is removed, the Vyasaya Bhudhi, as mentioned here and in the Bhagavad Gita 2.41, follows at once. This ascertained knowledge of the living being leads to loving service to the Lord, which the living being requires. The kingdom of God is unlimited. Therefore, the number of the assisting hands of the Lord is also unlimited. The Bhagavad Gita 13.14 asserts that the Lord has his hands, legs, eyes, and mouth in every nook and corner of his creation. This means that the expansions of the differentiated parts and parcels called jivas or living entities are assisting hands of the Lord. And all of them are meant for rendering a particular pattern of service to the Lord. The conditioned soul, even in the position of a Brahma, forgets thus by the influence of the illusory material energy generated out of false egoism. One can counteract such false egoism by invoking God consciousness. Liberation means getting out of the slumber of forgetfulness and becoming situated in the real loving service of the Lord, as exemplified in the case of Brahma. The service of Brahma is the sample of service in liberation distinguished from the so-called altruistic services full of mistakes and forgetfulness. Liberation is never in action and service without human mistakes. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much. So, Acharyas explained that uh... 
not every day brahma loses his memory or forgets that how to create it's not that that every day routine you know that brahma he wakes up and he says okay where am i and what is this place what am i supposed to do and then he goes up and down the lotus end then he hears tapa 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 and then he starts tapasya and the lord gives him the memory how to create so it is not an everyday event so uh, it is mentioned that on a particular day on which brahma did this past time of going you know up and down the lotus stem to regain his memory back that particular day of brahma is called the padma kalpa uh, in fact uh, shrimad bhagavatam itself describes three instances where uh, brahma ji forgets how to create and three different ways in which he is reminded about how to create uh, i remember the first way uh, is this that he goes up and down the stem and he hears tapa tapa the second is uh, this canto uh, where he, uh, where shukdev goswami mentions that the second instance where brahma ji forgets he meditates on the virat form of the lord he gets the remembrance back which is actually in this particular chapter only uh, the lord uh, he, he meditates on the virat form of the lord and he gets the remembrance back how to create and the third instance is uh, shukdev goswami is saying in the fourth chapter of this second canto when he offers uh, uh, prayers uh, one of the prayers that he offers uh, is in the fourth chapter where uh, you know he, he offers that uh, uh, that uh, when brahma ji forgot to create this universe and then uh brahma sends one of his energies and that energy is called saraswati so she enters into the mouth of brahma and she gives him the memory about how to create uh, so shukdev goswami uh, says that uh, 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 he says that uh, dear lord just like by sending this energy of saraswati in inspiring her to give the memory to brahma about how to create please inspire me also by giving the memory how to speak about the creation which brahma ji has created so uh, shukdev goswami is pray praying like this uh, in this particular first uh, shloka he is begging uh, mercy from the supreme lord that how to create so in this first uh, you know first shloka if you see uh, the middle para where it says oh, where is it go it's just a bow by thing this is the revival yeah then the revival of his pure consciousness and contraction of the tendency to forget his eternal relation with the lord can force simultaneously uh this uh, particular uh, this where if one is meditating on the virat roopa of the lord then there are two things happening one is revival of his pure consciousness and secondly is the counteraction of the tendency to forget his eternal relationship with the lord can follow uh, simultaneously so there are two things happening over here when somebody is meditating on the virat roop of the of the lord okay let's go to the next shloka and see what shilashok dev goswami has to say oh this is a very nice shloka shabdasai hi brahmana esha pantha yan naam bhir dhyayati dhir parthe pari brahma mantra tra na vindate arthana मायामये स्वाति माता जी प्लीज रीड दी ट्रांसलेशन एंड दी पोपट बोथ हरे कृष्ण माता जी द वे ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ वेदिक टॉक्स इज सो बिवेलरिंग 
that it directs the intelligence of the people to meaningless things like the heavenly kingdom. The conditioned souls hover in dreams of such heavenly illusionary places, but actually they do not relish any tangible happiness in such places. Perfect. The conditioned soul is always engaged in laying out plans for happiness within the material world, even up to the end of the universal limit. He, he is not even satisfied with available amenities on this planet Earth, where, ha where he has exploited the resources of nature to the best of his ability. He wants to go to the moon or the planet Venus to exploit resources there, but the Lord has warned us in the Bhagavad Gita 8.16 about the worthlessness of all the innumerable planets of this universe, as well as those planets within other systems. There are innumerable universes and also innumerable planets in each of them, but none of them is immune to the chief miseries of the material existence, namely the, namely the banks of birth, the banks of death, the pangs of old age and the pangs of disease. The Lord says that even the topmost planet known as the Brahma Loka or Satya Loka and what to speak of other planets like the heavenly planets is not, not a happy land for residential, residential purposes. Due to the presence of material pangs, as above mentioned, conditioned souls are strictly under the laws of spiritual activities and such they sometimes go up to Brahma Loka and come down to Patala Loka, as if they were unintelligent children on a merry-go-round. The real happiness is the, in the kingdom of God, where, uh, where no one has to undergo the pangs of... Hare Krishna Mataji. Kinds of material existence. Therefore, the Vedic phase of putative activities of living entities are misleading. One thing of the superior way of life in this country or that or in this planet or another, but no way in the material world can he, world can be fulfilled with real desire of life, namely eternal life, full intelligence and complete bliss. Indirectly, Srila Sukadeva Goswami affirms that Maharaj Parikshit in the last stage of life should not decide to transfer himself to the so-called heavenly planet, but should prepare himself for going back home, back to Godhead. None of the material planets nor the amenities available there for living conditions is everlasting. Therefore, one must have, have, uh, have a factual reluctance to enjoy such temporary happiness as they have heard. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you. Yeah. Hare Krishna Mataji, welcome Mataji. So, uh, in this uh, particular shloka, Shale Shukdev Goswami is saying that uh, one who has this desire to enjoy, okay, he has this uh, desire to enjoy some material things, uh, then he has to practice karma kanda. Because that gives him an opportunity to enjoy the fruits and uh, at the same time uh, be within this Vedic fold also. Then he is allowed to act according to his inclinations but uh, he is encouraged to give up the attachment to the fruits. He Then he comes to the stage of Nishkam Karma Yoga and then slowly he learns to detach himself from the fruits of his activities and his heart becomes uh, very pure enough and then he can uh, you know give up uh, his activities and uh, also then then he comes to the stage of jnana yoga uh, uh, and subsequently from jnana yoga he may choose to achieve uh, mukti or liberation or he may choose to go to the stage of uh, a Paramatma meditator where he can meditate on the Paramatma form of the Lord. So, from there also, again, he has a choice. Uh, he can choose to achieve liberation or he may choose to take up the path of Bhakti Yoga and progress further. But in this yoga ladder, at every stage, 
uh, there is a twist over here. Here, okay, rear it carefully. Okay, so uh, in this yoga ladder, at each step, you have to change your path. You have to give up that path and take up a new path. Therefore, Brahma is asking uh, Krishna, how should I act while I'm engaged in this creation process so that I don't become, you know, uh, lethargic or I do not have pride in me. Because when you see lethargy, uh, lethargy is due to the mode of uh, ignorance and pride is due to the mode of passion. So, uh, uh, Krishna he interestingly he gives a very cryptic answer uh, he says that find out that process which when performed will give the result which when not performed will not give the result which is the only process which can be performed by everyone at all times under all circumstances Krishna is saying that you find out what that process is and perform that process and you will be protected. So, because uh, here in these four verses, the Supreme Lord has to, you know, summarize. If you see the Canto 2 has got the Chatur Shloki Bhagavatam, which means in these four verses, uh, Krishna is, uh, uh, you know, summarizing the whole of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, he says that this process which can be carried out by everyone at all times and at all circumstances, uh, uh, either at the sadhana stage or at the sadhya stage or even after going to the spiritual world, the limbs of bhakti remain the same and one can practice the limbs uh, at a practicing stage or even at a perfected stage or in the, the initial stages or even at the perfected stage. So, but then the other practices, it's not the same with them. Uh, the sadhana and the sadhya for them are different. The sadhana for a karma kandi uh, is to engage in the prescribed duties and then whatever fruits uh, you know uh, he gets he's enjoying those fruits but then what is the sadhya so but eventually he is forced to come to the stage to uh, of giving up those fruits so what he is enjoying right now he has to give it up so, there is a change. And then even in Nishkam Karma Yogi, he is engaged in his prescribed duties. That is his sadhana. But his sadhya is to achieve a pure heart and Brahman realization. So, after uh, reaching, uh, which uh, uh, if you see, uh, he gives up his prescribed duties. So, the sadhana again changes and the sadhya also changes for Nishkam Karma. So, uh, like this, even for every practitioner, the sadhana and the sadhya are different. So, uh, Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur, while he is commenting on this particular verse, he is saying, Vivasayatmika Buddhir. And even Srila Prabhupada, he is also. Uh, commenting uh, that Vyavasaitmika Buddhir Ekehe Kuru Nandana. So, in the first Shloka Shila Prabhupada has given Vyavasaitmika Buddhi. So, uh, uh, this is possible only for a devotee. It is not possible for any other practitioner. Then he says that how come only it is possible? One may say, why not? Just like this devotee, uh, can be focused in serving the Lord, why can't a person who is aspiring for liberation be focused uh, in his practice of Jnana Yoga? Even a Karma Kandi, you know, can have Vyavasaitmika Buddhi. Vyavasaitmika Buddhi means one pinpoint, uh, you know, 
लक्ष्य और गोल दैट ओके आई वॉन्ट टू अटेन दिस पर्टिकुलर पाथ ओन एंड रीच दी हाइएस्ट स्टेज सो इट इज नॉट मेनी ब्रांच इट इज ओनली वन ब्रांच लाइक दैट वे सो ही वॉन्ट्स टू गो टू स्वर्ग ही कैन सो परफेक्टली परफॉर्म इज पाथ ऑफ यज्ञ तो कृष्णा चक्र ठाकुर से इज दैट यू सी एनी प्रैक्टिशनर हिज इंटेलिजेंस हैज टू फोकस If someone is preparing, for example, somebody is preparing for this medical exam, so the part of his intelligence says, "If I pass this exam, uh, I'll become a doctor." I, uh, and uh, because that meditation is definitely needed, uh, because that what is going on to give him the inspiration to study. So the benefits of passing this exam. and the part of his intelligence has to meditate on the sadhana the actual studies so he says that any practice uh, you take other than bhakti there is sadhya there is sadhana uh, bhed so what is to be practiced then uh, what is to be achieved uh, so therefore uh, intelligence is split in two parts Uh, but it cannot be two it has to be three then uh, 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 but he cannot just practice and achieve the goal he has to practice bhakti also then with that because even if it's a karma kandi he wants to achieve those fruits but with that he needs to if to if he wants to really enjoy also for that also he'll require bhakti so also bhakti is the you know active ingredient only when that active ingredient is there he will get that result without that he won't so therefore he has to concentrate on three things then vyavasaitmika buddhi is not possible for any other practitioner other than a devotee why because he explains that for a devotee what is the sadhana for we devotees what is our sadhana what do we do our sadhana is shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam sakhyam atmanivedanam and what is the sadhya again sadhya is shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam and what is the active ingredient again it is shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam so therefore there is no bhed therefore this vyavasaitmika buddhi he can just engage his intelligence in shravanam kirtanam the process of bhakti so one of the stages of progress in bhakti is we know is anartha nivritti automatically that anartha nivritti will happen you need not practice gyana yoga for anartha nivritti Uh, and then take up to ashtanga yoga to meditate on the parmatma form of the lord so and then graduate to bhakti to perform the pure devotional service he says that uh uh no need and shila prabhu so prabhupada is also saying that no bhakti in itself is self dependent it's not dependent on any other process and bhakti can accomplish anything Yeah, any other path can accomplish. So all the other paths need to have the ingredient of bhakti to achieve success. And uh, Krishna says to Uddhava in uh, the eleventh canto. Uh, what is that shloka? Give me one minute. Okay, I'll just open that because without that shloka, I won't be able to explain. Learn very the little. टीज पेनेस नॉलेज डिटैचमेंट मिस्टेक योगा चैरिटी 
religious duties and all other means of perfecting life is easily achieved by my devotee through loving service unto me. If somehow or the other my devotee desires promotion to the heaven, liberation or residence in my abode, he easily achieves such benediction. So, in contrast to this path of liberation, if one desires to stay within this material world and uh, engage in sense gratification, uh, either low level sense gratification or higher level sense gratification in Swarga. So, how this is a very not very good option. So, these two verses... He is chastising this path of Pravritti Marga. Uh, this path of uh, Vedas, uh, it engages uh, uh, one's intelligence in things uh, uh, of this world which are very temporary, like Swarga. Swarga is temporary. Heavenly planet is very temporary. So, um, they engage in many, many activities which keep them absorbed. And then they say that there is nothing higher than this. So these things of this world are in name only. Uh, like how somebody, if somebody says that uh, I am in Swarga now. But the very next second, Brahmaji goes to sleep. So everyone will be, you know, uh, diving into the... Uh, body of Garbodaksha Vishnu at that time. So it is not an eternally applicable statement. This Karma Kand section of the Vedas they absorb one's mind in things of this world which are not very eternal. They are temporary. So they don't give any eternal benefit like you know you have this enjoyment uh, in a dream. So, Shukdev Goswami is saying that this path of uh, Shabda Brahma, uh, Shabda Sihi Brahmana, where he is saying over here, I'm sorry, I just came with a scan. Shabda Sihi Brahmana, he says that uh, the, this particular uh, path of Shabda Brahman Vedas or this Karma Kanda section. They speak primarily about things within these three modes of material nature. So then Krishna says, Traigunya Vishaya Veda Nis Traigunya Bhavarjuna. Then Krishna is saying that situate yourself beyond the three modes of material nature. So uh, this is uh, what. Uh, uh, Shila Shukdev Goswami is saying and even the Acharyas have commented on this particular shloka. So it will be more clearer in the subsequent uh, shlokas. We will try to understand more in the subsequent shlokas. Atha Kavir Kavir Nama Su Yavad Artha Syad Appa Pramatho Vyavasaya Buddhi Siddhe Anna Siddhe Anya Tharthe Na Yet Tatra Parishrama Tatra Samikshamanan. Yeah, translation. Priyanka, please read the translation and purport both. Yes, Mother. Hare Krishna. Uh, translation. For this reason, the enlightened person should endeavor only for the minimum necessities of life while in the world of names. He should be intelligently fixed and never endeavor for unwanted things, being competent to perceive practically that all such endeavors are merely hard labor for nothing. <clears throat> for but the Bhagavad uh, Dharma or the Your voice is cut off. Your voice is cut Your voice is cut Yes, Mataji. Uh, is it audible now? 
Yeah. Uh, the whole universe, or for that matter, all material ex existence, is moving on as jagat simply by planning business to make one's position very comfortable or secure. Although everyone sees that this existence is near is neither comfortable nor secure and can never become comfortable or secure at any stage of development. Those who are captivated by the illusory advancement of material civilization following the way of uh, phantasmagoria are certainly madmen. The whole material creation is a jugglery of names only. In fact, it is nothing but a bewildering creation of matter like earth, water and fire. The buildings, furniture, cars, bungalows, mills, factories, industries, peace, war, or even the highest perfection of material science, namely atomic energy and electronics, are all simply bewildering names of material elements with their con concomitant reactions of the three modes. Since the devotee of the Lord knows them perfectly well, he is not interested in creating unwanted things for a situation which is not at all reality, but simply names of no more existent, no more significance than the babble of sea waves. The great kings, leaders, and soldiers fight with one another in order to perpetuate their names in history. They are forgotten in due course of time, and they make a place for another era in history. But the devotee realizes how much history and historical persons are useless products of flickering time. The fruitative worker aspires after a big fortune in the matter of wealth, women, and worldly adoration, but those who are fixed in perfect reality are not at all interested in such false things. For them, it is all a waste of time. Since every second of human life is important, an enlightened man should be very careful to utilize time very cautiously. One second of human life wasted in the vain research of planning for happiness in the material world can never be replaced even if one spends millions of coins of gold. Therefore, the transcendentalist desiring freedom from the clutches of Maya or the illusory activities of life is warned here with not to be captivated by the external features of fruitative actors. Human life is never meant for sense gratification, but for self-realization. Srimad Bhagavatam instructs us solely on this subject matter, on this subject from the very beginning to the end. Human life is simply meant for self-realization. The civilization which aims at this utmost perfection never indulges in creating unwanted things and such a perfect civilization prepares men only to accept the bare necessities of life or to follow the principle of the best use of a bad bargain. Our material bodies and our lives in that connection are bad bargains because the living entity is actually spirit and spiritual advancement of the living entity is absolutely necessary. Human life is intended for the realization of this important factor and one should act accordingly, accepting only the bare necessities of life and depending more on God's gift without diversion of human energy for any other purpose such as being mad for material enjoyment. The materialistic advancement of civilization is called the civilization of the demons, which ultimately ends in wars and scarcity. The transcendentalist is specifically warned here with to be fixed in mind so that even if there is difficulty in plain living and high thinking, he will not budge even an inch from his stark determination. For a transcendentalist, it is a suicidal policy to be intimately in touch with the sense gratifiers of the world because such a policy will frustrate the ultimate gain of life. Shukadev Goswami met Maharaja Parikshit when the latter felt the necessity for such a meeting. It is the duty of a transcendentalist to help persons who desire real salvation and to support the cause of salvation. One might note that Sukadev Goswami never met Maharaja Parikshit while he was ruling as a great king. For a transcendentalist, the mode of activities is explained in the next sloka. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna.
uh, what should be the attitude of this sadhaka towards this material world? He gives this answer in this text number three. Uh, so he says that a wise person should be very attentive to his goal of achieving liberation uh, and should uh, have this vivasaitnika buddhi. With great determination, he should apply himself to this path or this particular process of liberation. And he may need some facilities for his, you know, bodily performance. Uh, so, the body and the soul has to be maintained. Uh, so, that person, whatever is required to keep the body and the soul together, that much he accepts from this uh, world of uh, names. So, anything more than uh, this, he does not endeavor. Atya ahara prayasascha. He does not endeavor too much. So, he understands that anything more than this required, a lot of endeavor has to be done. A lot of prayas has to be done. And, and his ultimate goal may get disturbed. So, Jira Vishwanath Chakri Thakur says that being fixed in determination, attentive to his goal, this wise man, he will uh, take only what is required among his material objects or uh, to sustain his body or support his body. And uh, he will not attempt to support himself by any other means, uh, which is just an unnecessary labor. So, uh, having criticized severely the path of karmis as being material, now Shri Shukdev Goswami, he speaks about the necessity of attaining perfection in yoga, which rejects the results of karma and uh, which... Uh, uh, which uh, is uh, common to the devotees and the jnanis as well. So, the intelligent person does not meditate on the material objects of pleasure. Like some people might say, Oh, I wish I had an Apple iPad. Oh, I wish I could just, you know, get that BMW car. So, he does not endeavor for them. So, it is said that... Uh, 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 Kamesya nin uh, what is that shloka? I just don't forget. Kamasya nindriya priti labho jiveta yavata jivasya tattva jigyasa nartho yas chaha karma bhi. So, uh, life's desire should only be directed uh, uh, towards uh, um, the devotional service to the Lord. It should not be diverted or directed towards sense gratification. And one should desire a healthy life for, you know, proper uh, maintenance. And what is this human life meant for? Jivasya Tattva Jigyasa. This human life is meant for uh, inquiring about the absolute truth. And then nothing else should be the goal of one's life. So, one should accept as many material objects as one needs to support this body. That is in the Yavad Artha. Because uh, if one is attentive uh, to perfecting one's sadhana, though one sees many obstacles, one does not deviate from this practice of Vyavasaikama Buddhi. So he says, whatever happens, simply happens. Whatever I have decided, that is certain. So, the amount needed to support this body of this young person is not the same uh, as one needs, uh, uh, one's own need. Like So, though there are many other supporting uh, ways of supporting the body, one does not attempt them over sense gratification, over, uh, you know, uh, pampering the body and because such efforts there is only labor required so he's saying that punas punas charvanam charvita it is like just grinding what is already being ground you are not going to get any juice so like if you see if you uh, grind uh, keep on grinding sugar cane one point will come out where there is only you know dry uh, you know, sugar cane, you won't extract any juice. 
So the material world is also exactly the same. It's not going to derive any juice out, out of it. So now tomorrow what we'll be seeing is, we'll see from uh, shloka number four, because then uh, one may ask, uh, what does it mean to keep the body and the soul together? Then Shukdev Goswami will give the answer that how to keep the body and the soul together. What does it mean to keep the body and the soul together? So uh, thank you, dear devotees. Thank you so much. Anybody has any queries, questions, doubts or uh, hmm, any comments or any realizations you want to share, you are free to ask me. Sorry, we just completed three shlokas, but we are going a little slow, but we are going in a little deep details with these shlokas. Okay, nobody has any doubts? Fine, okay. So we'll just see tomorrow. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Yeah, Priyanka, it is very technical, little difficult to understand, but don't worry. Eventually, you will catch up with the whole thing. Even I did not understand it in one go. <laughs> I had to read many, many times. That's where I understood. Okay. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.